What's up, you guys? My name is Liv. Welcome to Bombshell Beats, where we talk about all things music. Today, we are going to get into the Billboard Top 10 Songs of All Time. Whoa, the Top 10 Songs of All Time. That's crazy. I was actually very, very surprised at this list that I'm about to share with you guys. Um, you know, I feel like I had a pretty good idea of what would be on the list and um, boy was I wrong. <laughs> so uh, Billboard is a massive music business and um, their charts are very reliable and very important. They have a crazy algorithm um, and I have their website pulled up here. Um, and I did want to note this one thing besides their algorithm. If you want to go look up how they gather these songs, it's kind of interesting. You can just go on Billboard's website um, and search. Uh, it seems like they're really taking into account everything from like sync licenses, from people playing um, music at bars and clubs and such, all the way to just streams. Um, so they really are accounting for a lot here. So I think it's a pretty accurate account. Um, but yeah, the one thing I wanted to mention was here's some of one of the rules they have on their website. It says recurrent rules. It says descending songs are removed from the Billboard Hot 100 and radio songs simultaneously after 20 weeks on the Billboard Hot 100. And if ranking below 50 or after 52 weeks, if below number 25. Um, and this goes for like all the genres. So it goes further um, to say like descending songs are removed from hot art, hot R&B, hip hop songs, hot country, da, 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 da. So um, if the songs are moving down the way, um, they get kicked. So the, for the greatest songs of all time, it has to be something that people continue listening to regardless of the season. Um, so yeah, let's, let's take a look, shall we? The first, or so we'll go bottom to top. So 10 to one. Um, so the number 10 ranking song of all time, according to Billboard is Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. So I'll play like a little snippet of it for those who don't know. I don't want to get copyrighted. So here's just a little bit. Oh God, I have no idea how this is going to sound. An interesting song to be on the top 10. Am I surprised about this one? No. Um, I feel like the reason why this one is on the top 10 is probably has a lot to do with the fact that Ed Sheeran is played at a lot of weddings. I don't know. I feel like uh, this one, yeah, definitely. It's, it's like a wedding song. It's a party song. Um, this one is, is very popular. It's very popular. Um, it's got a happy vibe. To be honest, none of these songs um, on the top 100 are slow, which is interesting. Or just the top 10 I'm looking at. They're all faster, upbeat songs, dancey songs, songs that you would probably hear in an atmosphere. And they're all relatively clean. There's another interesting thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if you have an explicit song and you're only hitting 18 up, Essentially, most parents, I mean, you know, some parents will totally let their kids listen to whatever, but then some will not. So there you go. Um, yeah, Shape of You by Ed Sheeran, number 10. Not surprised. Number nine, however, let me pull this one up. Number nine, this one, it surprised me at first just to see it. I was like, oh, teehee, it's kind of funny. Um, but then after, like, I kind of thought about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, number nine is, let me get the whole title right here. Macarena by, it's the Bayside Boys Mix by Los Del Rio. This one also makes, yeah, it makes sense to me. I just kind of talked about that. But the Macarena. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, like, 
I can't really pinpoint the exact last time that I listened to the Macarena, but it had to have been in the last year. Um, so yeah, for those of you who don't know the song, um, I'm gonna play a little bit of it. And you do the little dance. Hey, Macarena. <laughs> this one has a similar BPM to Shape of You, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, because, like, I'm in love with the shape of you. Or, like, a Macarena. I wonder if that's, like, the tempo that is the dancing one. I don't know. There's a dancing tempo I know that most dance songs try to hit. So Macarena by Bayside, the Bayside Boys Remix. If you asked me who the Macarena was by, I would not be able to tell you. Um, but now I know. I wouldn't have been able to tell you, but now I know. And it is Los Del Rio. Crazy. I wonder how much... It looks like... I'm looking at the picture. It looks like two guys. Those guys probably made a lot of money on that song. Um, okay. So let's move on to the next one, which does not surprise me at all. Um, yeah, these lower ones, like 5 through 10, I'm like, okay. But the top ones are just so shocking to me. Um, also it's probably important to mention the date that I'm actually recording this. It's July 19th right now. Um, this is obviously subject to change. Billboard, I believe, updates, um, like probably every 24 hours. I think I'm remembering that correctly. Don't quote me on it, but fairly sure every 24 hours. Um, but yeah. So number eight is Dromopoli. Number eight is I Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas. Not surprised. Not surprised. I, yeah, the Black Eyed Peas is quite the group. I remember when they performed at the Super Bowl. Um, that was fun. And then I also remember, you know, Fergie's national anthem at that one basketball game. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely look that up. There's a lot of memes. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I got a feeling if you don't know this song here, we'll play a snippet of it. See if I can expert scrub to the chorus here. This song is also um, upbeat and, like, it's a good BPM, I would say. Another dancing, and I'm sorry, for those of you who don't know, beats per minute is BPM, so how fast um, the steady pulse is going within the context of a minute. Um, another dancey song that people can jump to. I've heard this one at a lot of weddings, a lot of weddings too. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe that's just the time of my life. I'm in my 20s, so a lot of people are getting married, so maybe that's why I'm just thinking about weddings. But um, I feel like I've also seen this at, you know, kids' events. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a fun, fun song. All of these are fun songs. Um, so, yeah, maybe if you want to have a number one hit and you're a musician, you need to make fun songs because the ones that are lasting are fun and they're dancey. Maybe people just like to dance. Maybe that is the case. Also, uh, important to note, this is exclusive to the United States, this billboard thing. So, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah. All right, let's move on. <laughs> uh, this one also does not surprise me. Um, the next one, however, definitely does, but this one this one is not that shocking to me. Um, another song of a very similar vibe to I Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas. Um, this song is... Oh, God, should I do another drum roll? No. What if he did snaps? Snapping drum roll? No. Snaps are... Applause. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna shut up and tell you what the heck... What the heck the song is. The song is Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO featuring Lauren Bennett and Goon Rock. Hmm. Those are two names I've never heard before. But there you go. For those of you who do not know Party Rock Anthem, 
again, we are noticing, I know I won't shut up about the tempo of the song, but another dance song, just saying. Here's a snippet. That noise, that da 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 that's such a noise. That is iconic. That is an iconic noise for sure. Um, I would love to know. Does LMFAO do their own mixing? I have no idea. I probably should have researched that before this. Sorry, y'all. I'm asking questions and I should be answering them. But um, yeah, that noise, that's an iconic noise. Another, you know, ns, ns, ns like kind of poppy sound but yet with the rapping you know like we're seeing some rap songs here like shape of you is not rap macarena is not rap but i got a feeling has rap and so does party rock anthem so rap is up and coming i mean that probably i have no idea what the top 10 was a bajillion years ago but i bet you rap when you know in the 90s it probably wasn't all the way at the top probably wasn't so that's kind of cool kind of cool to see rap be relevant um but i don't know recently though rap is like kind of i don't know i feel like 2017 was a really good year for rap maybe 2018 2019 but since covid man i don't know that's a hot take but i have not been too crazy about rap and maybe that's just because i'm not listening to enough artists but i haven't heard a song i'm like wow that's you know, super amazing. I mean, now we have all like the Kendrick Drake beef. Um, and those tracks are pretty sick, but, um, I don't know, nothing super notable, like, um, 2017, 18. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Let me know if you agree with that. I'm curious. Um, so yeah, party rock anthem. I feel like party rock anthem and I got a feeling could like easily be mixed up. Those are two songs that are very similar to one another. And it makes sense that they are number what, seven and eight on the charts. Crazy. All right, let's get into the next one, shall we? This one did surprise me. It really did. I, um, yeah. It's, uh, I'll just tell you, no more drum rolls, it's tacky. <laughs> it's How Do I Live by Leanne Rhymes. It is, and I think that is crazy. This one, I believe, I don't even know what you would technically call this genre. I guess just pop, but here we go. Let's give a little snippet, shall we? Maybe if I skip a little bit. This one is slower. This one is slower. Maybe, I don't know. This is like a breakup song, right? The other ones haven't been breakup songs. So maybe, I don't know, maybe Americans like getting their heart broken and screaming in their car. Maybe this is a general trend for the population of America. Who knows? Um, yeah, but the others, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Shape of You, Macarena, I Got a Feeling, Party Rock Anthem, all dancey, fun songs. But then we have number six, How Do I Live? Sad, sad song. But like, it's kind of got that epic, you know, she's got that like, you know, some Whitney songs kind of have that vibe, like that big, I don't know, could just, you'd be performing it in front of an orchestra, you know, with like a nice dress on. This is a big sound, big sound here. So I could see, I could see why it's in the top 10, but it still shocked me for sure. So there you go. I wish I had more to say about Leanne Rhymes. I'm not too super familiar with the artist, um, but cool stuff. All right, so let's move on to number five, which is a banger, as they all are. These are all great songs. I'm not going to knock. Um, this one is slightly explicit, but has a very, a good, I would say, I would argue a great clean version Sometimes clean versions are really out there, um, can be hard, but, um, I don't know. It's hard to get a clean version going on, uh, that people actually like that sounds close to the original. Um, but I know some artists like Nicki Minaj, for example, she'll come up with an entire other set of lyrics because she really cares about having younger kids listen to her music. I remember hearing her talk about that on Ellen. Um, but yeah, so not has a clean version but isn't clean originally and i believe this 
is one of the few. Yeah, the most most of the top songs are clean, but this one is not. So here you go. Without further ado, it is Uptown Funk. Um, it's interesting the tag. I'm like, this is just Bruno on Mars, but it's not. It's also it's Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars. So let's give it a tiny baby listen. Um, let's see if I can scrub to the. Break it down, girl says hallelujah. Very good. Yeah, and then, oh, here we could just kind of go to the chorus right here. Just. Saturday night, we in the spot. Alright, there you go. Super funky bass line on this song. Classic. Um, I think this song is timeless. I mean, all of these are obviously timeless. But this one, I think, will probably... It's a... You know, I I, I see it. You know, it's in movies. It's um, on party playlists. DJs are remixing it. It's it's just a good... It's a good vibe. I mean, Bruno Mars is awesome. Uh, I know we just talked about the Black Eyed Peas Super Bowl performance. Bruno Mars Super Bowl performance, I thought was wonderful. I mean, um, yeah, it's good. He's a great artist, super high energy. I feel like we'll continue to see Uptown Funk in like some movies in the future, like big time movies. Um, it's just a vibe. It's a good song. Upbeat again, as most of these are. Um, so yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one which i thought this one is by far the most shocking to me um sorry let me type it into my little ipad here oops uh come on this is one of uh it's a classic right here for real. I guess these are all classics, but it's Mac the Knife by Bobby Darren. That's crazy, right? A jazz song. Bobby Darren also did that one song from Finding Nemo, right? Somewhere beyond the sea. Yeah. But Mac the Knife, like, I thought the Beyond the Sea one would have been more popular just because it was in Nemo, but I stand corrected. Yeah, that one is truly shocking to me. I guess there's still a big population of jazz listeners out there. I mean, I definitely know that many high schools have jazz bands. Many colleges have jazz bands. But I feel like jazz bands that perform at gigs are becoming less and less frequent. But, you know, this is this is hopeful for jazz music. We still have a relevant jazz following. I mean, jazz music is wonderful. It's just not one of the more popular genres now, I suppose. You know, in the USA, we have um, country music is number one. And jazz is probably falling down. I don't know what where jazz ranks on the scale of popularity, but it uh, it's definitely not number one. I know that. Uh, but this is very, I don't know, this is encouraging. I miss big band music. Like, it'd be really cool. I love that Lady Gaga, you know, gets on TV and performs with her, you know, little sparkly outfits and has these big bands behind her. And uh, who else is doing that? I mean, there's plenty of artists doing that, but I can really, like, I, Lady Gaga is pretty iconic. Um, so, yeah. All right. Let's move on to... The next one, shall we? Uh, you like my little interlude music? The next one is Smooth by Santana featuring Rob Thomas. Um, <laughs> I don't have much to say because I'm like, I don't think I can think about this off the top of my head. Wow. Yeah, I don't know this song. Ah! I feel like 
feel like, oh, well, maybe I do. Maybe I've heard it. I don't know. Don't hate me. Don't knock on me for this one. It's great, though. Seems like a vibe. I mean, you got this like, dun, 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 you know, kind of like, a, oh, man, I don't want to say the wrong words here. I'm like, people get mad at me. It's like kind of like a, you know, Latin influence, like, dun, 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 like kind of like a maybe samba kind of vibe or cha-cha kind of vibe. I don't know. I am probably saying all the wrong things right now, but this is another dancey song. Um, It's giving, it's giving South America for sure. Um, Seems like a vibe though, but I think, I mean, it seems like all the words are in English. Here, let's look. Yep, all in English. There you go. So yeah, that one surprised me just because I don't know it. And maybe I'm living under a rock. And that's fine. I I'll gladly live under my rock, just like Patrick. Patrick and I are the same that way. I try to be relevant, but here we are. I don't even know the third greatest song of all time, apparently. So, well, as of today. <laughs> but yeah. But it, but it, remember, don't forget the rules, the billboard rules. It has to be the, it dropping to be removed. So this has to be a consistent, steady thing. And apparently this is a consistent, steady song. So there you go. Here, my friends, is another song that really wowed me. I was really genuinely surprised that this was on the top 10. Um, this song is The Twist. The freaking twist by Chubby Checker. I was super surprised to see this one. This is an oldie. Some of these are pretty old, like, which I guess makes sense, but timeless. Maybe timeless is a better word to use here. Um, for those of you who don't know the song, we'll play a little snippet of it. Now they're kind of jazz. Dancy. The twist is actually a dance move. Um, you can Google it. I'm not here to dance for you. You do not want to see my dancing. It is not bueno. But uh, yeah, the twist is number two right now. That's insane. Love the song. I mean, this one probably is real popular. Um, I, I can just imagine like on a cruise ship, you know, just a bunch of friends hanging out sipping their frozen pina coladas it's like 90 degrees outside and they're all like by the pool and then they're just like doing the twist and comes over with some dj or whatever i don't know i could see it or um like an all-inclusive i don't know it, it, I, maybe in a tropical setting maybe not maybe a wedding maybe indoor venue I wonder where this song is being played to why it's so popular or maybe just people are jamming out on their phone or in their cars to the twist do djs play this i don't know kind of shocking kind of shocking uh maybe it's selling a lot of uh licenses or is being played at restaurants who knows who knows all right This one did not surprise me. I am not surprised at all at this because I hear this song all the time. And it's pretty fire. And it's also pretty new. Uh, let's see when this song came out, shall we? Can I even see it on Apple Music? <laughs> I almost played this song for you. We're not ready yet. Let's see when this song came out, shall we? I'm going to make y'all wait. It's okay. It's okay. We can wait. We all be scrolling on our phones. Our attention spans have become so bad. So let, let's practice our attention spans, shall we? And while live stalls. I just, okay. Got it. Got the release date. This is also has, this has a crazy release date. Wow. This was released in 2020. What a time. What a time 2020 was. Remember when, like, the pandemic happened? The panoramic? The Benjamin? The pineapple? All the P words except for 
pandemic because that's how you cope with stressful times, joking about them. The pina colada, that's what we should have called the pandemic, whatever. But who cares what I think? Who cares what I think? All right. This song was released in 2020 during the panoramic, the pandemic, the pandemicus. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, the song's Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Dun, 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 dun. I would say this song gives similar vibes to Uptown Funk, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. The Weeknd is another Super Bowl performer. How many Super Bowl performers do we have on this top 10? The Weeknd. I'm not sure about Chubby Checker. I'm not sure about Santana and Rob Thomas. Not sure. I doubt Bobby Darren. Um, Bruno Mars was a Super Bowl. So we have two. There we go. We got The Weeknd. Bruno Mars performed during the Super Bowl. I don't think LMFAO did. I don't know. The Super Bowl is pretty family friendly. So I would feel like just because they, their name is LMFAO, they probably didn't perform at the Super Bowl. Um, and then we had the Black Eyed Peas. So there's three. And Ed Sheeran. Did Ed Sheeran? Oh, I need to know this. Some of you guys are probably like, obviously or obviously not. Was Ed Sheeran in the Super Bowl? Wow. Okay. Ed Sheeran doesn't want to perform at the Super Bowl. He would only want to be a guest. Oh. Like when they had all those rappers. Interesting. At least not... Okay, well, there you go. And that's from uh, Billboard again. And uh, some other websites are saying the same thing. So there you go. Maybe Ed Sheeran doesn't want to perform at the Super Bowl. You know, I probably wouldn't either if I was a really famous artist. Dang, I'm just now realizing that my audio, my audio went out. That's fun. All right, well, we're just going to pull the audio from my phone. So there you go. Uh, it is what it is. Okay, so. Damn. Oops, darn. Whatever. Okay, blinding lights by the weekend. Blinding Whites by the Weekend. Um, I'm okay, my, my phone's still recording. Blinding Whites by the Weekend. We need to listen to it, don't we? Let's do it. There's another, like, little motif melody thing that's, uh... That is something. It's very good. It's very good. Love Blinding Lights. Love The Weekend. The Weekend's great. Iconic. Um, yeah. So, without further ado, let's end this video. I'm sorry. I'm so zoned now because my freaking... Uh, this this is just what happens when you're not monitoring your audio. It just quits on you. Mm. Thanks, Logic, for that. Love Logic Pro, but now I'm not going to have good audio for this. I'm going to have to use my phone audio. So that's fun. All right, well, whatever. I'm zoned now. What a letdown. Of course I'm zoned. For the blinding light, for the number one billboard song. I love how I'm still talking in my mind. I can still hear myself in the headphones, but uh, the number one billboard song is Blinding Lights by the Weekend. All right, I already said that. Cool. Well, yep, that's a wrap. That's all I got for you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great rest of your day. Bye. I'm so weak at myself. It was recording on the microphone. So maybe the audio won't be bad for the podcast. Unless it is. Uh, I'm still kind of getting used to this. I have only recorded vocals before, not my voice. So. Alright. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end it now. Okay, bye. <laughs>